Welcome to Insight 361, the place where you get a bit more. My name is Andreas Enqvist and I will demonstrate how you publish a SharePoint site with Forefront Unified Access Gateway 2010. The tutorial have the following conditions. SharePoint 2010 installed and configured with a site. In my case it is called Intranet 2. Only one SharePoint and one Unified Access Gateway server. Unified Access Gateway installed and configured with an HTTPS portal. External DNS resolution is already taken care of. The internal and external site names are not the same. The roadmap for this tutorial will be the following. I will verify that the SharePoint site is not published at the Unified Access Gateway portal. Then I will configure Unified Access Gateway and after that I will verify that the SharePoint site is still not functional. To solve the problem I will show how to configure the SharePoint site and the Internet Information Server. Finally I will verify that the site is published and functional. To verify that the site is not published, we start by logging on into the portal. As we can see, there are no SharePoint applications available. Now we will start to configure the Unified Access Gateway server. I have started the Unified Access Gateway Management Console and Activation Monitor. Let's start by expanding the portal where we want to add the SharePoint site. Click Add in the application window and choose Microsoft SharePoint 2010 in the web drop down box. Press Next. Give the application a name. The name will be visible in the portal browser. Here I give the name of Test Intranet. Press Next when you're finished. Read the information in step 3 and go with the first option. Configure an application server. If you are configuring a farm of servers, you will go with option 2. Press next when you're finished. In step number 4, we will enter the domain name of the internal website. In my case, it would work with both intranet2 and intranet2.rc.scane. Enter the public domain name in the public hostname field. In my case, it will be intranet2. If you are in an environment where you have the same internal and external DNS names, then you should read up on the Replace Host Header option. In step 5 we have to choose what authentication method we want to use. In this case I go with a single sign-on with the already configured AD authentication that I use for the portal. This will give a nice and seamless experience for the user. Step 6 is where you control the presence of the application in the portal. You should give a short description and a more thorough description of the application to your users, just for the little extra user experience. You can also choose to open it in a new window, which I recommend if you are targeting tablet browsers like the iPad and Androids. It is also here that you can change the default icon of the application, but that is not covered in this tutorial. Press next when you're finished. Step 7 is where you choose what users will be able to see and use the application. Default is all authenticated users, but since it is a test site for me, I will limit it so that only the IT department can see it. You can also use the authorization to deny users and groups. Press next when you're finished. We have now created a new application in the portal called Test Intranet. Now we will activate the configuration and that will take some minutes. Check the activation monitor to see when it is finished.
The activation monitor will show you that the activation has finished. Scroll down to the bottom of the list and verify a successful activation. Now we will log on to the portal to verify that there are a SharePoint application published. When we start the test SharePoint application, it opens up in a new window, just as we wanted, but it shows us a 404 page cannot be found. Let's take care of that now by configuring the SharePoint and Internet Information Server. Here I have started the SharePoint 2010 Central Administration website. Click on the Application Management and choose Configure Alternate Access Mappings under the Web Applications. If you have multiple sites on your SharePoint server, you should filter the selection to only show the site that you want to publish, in this case Intranet 2. Click Alternate Access Mapping Collection and change Alternate Access Mapping and in my case select the Intranet 2 site. Click Edit Public URLs and enter the external name that you will request from the Internet. Since we are using an HTTPS portal, we will use the HTTPS Intranet 2 rc.sc as the public URL. You can choose any of the Internet, Custom or Extranet fields. Functionality might vary depending on functions inside the SharePoint and is not covered in this tutorial. I will enter the URL in the Internet field. Press Save when you're done. As we can see, there is now a public URL for the Intranet 2. Requests made with the URLs on the left side will be responded with an answer redirecting or transforming to the public URL on the right side. The server can now handle HTTPS requests, but we will have to tell it to handle unencrypted requests as well. Let's press Add Internal URLs and enter the HTTP Intranet 2.rsyd.sc 80 in the text box and choose the Internet Zone. Press Save. Now there should be two mappings to the Internet Zone for this site. One secure and one unsecure. Both mappings will result in an answer where the server tries to redirect the request to the secure URLs. Now we have to instruct the Internet Information Service website to also accept the request with the host header of intranet 2rcse We open up the Internet Information Server Manager and expand the connections until we find the site we want to work with, in my case Intranet 2. Right click on the Edit Bindings and observe the current bindings. As we can see, the server is not aware of the host header of intranet 2rcsc which result in a 404 page cannot be found. Let's add another host header to the site. Press the Add button. In the host name text box, you enter the external URL for the site. In this case, http intranet 2rcsc This will instruct the web server to accept the host header for the external domain name as well. Press OK and close. Now we have configured the SharePoint and Internet Information Server and we'll verify that it actually works. We start by logging into the portal and start the test Internet application. It opens up in a new window as before, but now we get the Internet instead of the 404. Thank you for watching this video and you can find more information at our website insight361.com, the place where you get a bit more.